Thank you very much, Constance, with the Children of Vietnam Veterans Health Alliance. You know what? I think we need to lift the energy up here. We're going to invite everybody to stand up. We're inviting Tall, ba Tall Paul back, uh, Anishinaabe hip hop artist from Minneapolis. He's going to lift the mood up here for us. Thank you. Hello again. So I'm learning something new every day. Um, there was a guy that actually came up to me a little while ago and said, have you ever heard about chemtrails? And I said, yeah, I heard about chemtrails. That's uh, that's weather modification, right? And he's like, yeah, but did you know aluminum drops from the chemtrails into the soil and affects the uh, soil? I was like, nah, I didn't even think of that. And he's like, yeah, uh, Monsanto produces aluminum resistant seeds now to uh, kind of make up for that. So I'm learning stuff new every day. Uh, so I'm just here to perform and get educated, you know? But uh, I'm gonna do a couple songs for you guys. I just want y'all to listen. But we live in a reality now in a time He's right, where man. They are I would say anyone, you know, protect your spirit. Right off my political rally music. Protect your spirit because, <laughs> because you're in the place where spirits get eaten. Shout out to John Trudell. So this song's called Protect Your Spirit. And I guess you can interpret that how you want to. Me, I think, you know, what if our spirits live on after we die? So it's up to us to protect them, right? Every day, somebody trying to eat your spirit, like Monsanto. How too sick individuals can produce with residuals The miracle of peer evolving if it's old is crazy Stated it plainly, we see it hazy Take not for granted the babies, may we pay heed To this cyclical storm Melt the tip of this cyclical icicles Warm till the bicycles, tires are worn I score no man stand Naturally we're children of the corn Not of the hamburger, not of the pie Whoever said adults are educators was a lie Parents teach without scouting out the outcomes Our outlooks without Without doubt a drought without sun I only hope I give my son right away While the difference he's created for me Night and day Reconsider who you picture as teachers It's not about the image, it's about what they teach us You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter what you look like We're all educators here if we choose to be These little kids are out here showing us how to have a good time You know what I mean? They're the only ones out here getting down dancing We can learn from everybody they're the only ones that ain't too shy to do that, you know? They're educated. God forbid our kids go to school to learn from fools. The melting pots already injecting them with the rules. Daughters gotta be Barbies to get in with the cool. Feathers wanna be like fathers that they never knew. I'm not saying every teacher isn't worth their pay. I'm simply saying most of them don't know of colored pain. They say you can't teach an old man new tricks. Nor can a foreign mind teach a mind's old shit. Well, if I don't know my past, then my ass is grass. Same reason lots of women sell their ass for cash. Same reason thirsty men trick their cash to tap. What's the heads with the pimps and the Cadillacs Teens learn from a media that serves them elitist fucks With no wise folks to preach them up Reconsider who you picture as teachers It's not about the image, it's about what they teach us So does it make me any less of an educator Because I'm out here dressed in some uh, hood attire? I don't know you know what I mean? I got the uh, Uncle Sam with the uh, Whatever you want to call that handkerchief on his face Because that's really what they are, man They're the gangsters Political gangsters When a baby's misdirected My best guess is it's due to the guardians elected A baby's orbit is electric So it must take some broke souls to do its eccentrics A young bull that accepted From the cities to the rest Suicide is adolescent This my attempt at progression Still it's pity at its best to him I to address it I'm lost my damn self Myself I can't help If I'm a grown soul I better tell my hands well But I ain't got no time for yours If you're a grown man There comes a point in time in life when we don't hold hands When we're beyond pity We don't be on titties Look to yourself for help I'm not well be gone fitting Reconsider who you How would I Check, check, can y'all hear me? Okay, I thought I felt my mic cut out a little bit right there. Can we cut out that track? 
So this guy's just talking about how we got the mind power to control what we do with our lives and how we feel. Yeah, we're going to that one. Yep. When we leave as humans, we go back to being. being human beings. The next one. But we need number two. Well, I would say to anyone, you know, protect your spirit. Peaceful revolution. <laughs> protect your spirit. Yeah, here we go. How y'all feeling? Imagine that the states were occupied by China. Imagine that the Fendi fan will put you in a liner. Imagine that you got gunfire instead of fire. Imagine that they dumped you in a ditch with your daughter. Imagine that for this China's troops were all plotted. Imagine those surviving in your family had to watch it. Imagine they were labeled insurgents for trying to stop it. Imagine they received the same treatment and dealt the darkness. Imagine that the leaders of this country couldn't do shit. Imagine after all this, it was pointless trying to prove shit. Imagine having no voice when elections came around. Around. Imagine even if you get it, tell this word and back out. Imagine now who the last line I wrote was about. I imagine you picture the black president's charming smile. Imagine being one of them safe, secure China citizens, watching your leaders put ink to the deadliest of provisions. Yeah, and bad lives said you're a domestic terrorist. You could be locked for life, plus no one will ever know where this is. And all the blame for this went straight to the black president. No credit given to the faceless camp that is directing him. Imagine now you didn't have to imagine it. I'm forbidding you with soil that's currently happening. But our demise is not supplied by slavery. It's obviously served by dirty hands on crooked guys. If obviously America became a third world, I'm curious if I dare to fight or watch it unfurl. Get scared and run, I pack some guns and let them bullets burst. I think I'll take the ladder, homie, family comes first. I never once gave a fuck about politics. I see that college isn't where their own knowledge lives. And little time McNignan fuck learned all of this. Fight yourself to study up, pass it on and polish shit. We gotta. Learn the knowledge, pass it on, and pile the shit. Like the little shorties out here, they're the future. Let's not contaminate their minds. If members of the Peace Brigade can meet Cobra over here at the uh, at the march table. Hey, Cobra, do we still need uh, um, marshals? No, we're okay. okay so we're okay on marshals. Thank you, Tall Paul. That was sensational. And, that, and then we were thinking too. We have so many beautiful signs that folks could come on up and then show everyone your signs so people can can get your messages. That'd be great. So feel free to come on up, kids. Thanks for dancing. Um, and our next speaker is Ladonna Redmond. Ladonna last. Uh, April 2013 launched the Campaign for Food Justice Now, a membership-based organization that will use a race, class, and gender analysis to promote food and agricultural system reforms and advocate for the advocate for the adoption of right-to-know food policies in the U.S. LaDonna is also the Outreach and Education Coordinator for the Seward Co-op for the uh, soon-to-be Friendship Co-op in South Minneapolis, which I and a lot of other people are really excited about. LaDonna's a longtime uh, Chicago activist. Uh, we're running tight on time, but please check out her sensational TEDx video. It's really, really awesome. LaDonna, thank you. All right, so we asked you all to come up with these signs because, see, I want to be with you, not talking to you or at you. So come on up so we can be together and really demonstrate the solidarity that we really believe in that will change the world. So if you have those signs, we need you to come on up. We don't need you to be shy, because y'all from the marks, so I don't know why y'all out here, you can't be shy. So come on, come on, let's go. Before I make my comments, I always have to give honor and praise to those that have gone before me, my ancestors, those 
that I can call the names of and those that I cannot call the names of, those that died in the Maiafa, those that were captured and brought to this country and forced to work on this land. I have to give honor and praise to them because without them I could not be here. I would not be here and guess what? You would not be here either. And so we have to thank those that have gone on before us. We thank the Native American elders who have gone before us. We thank those that laid down their lives for us. And so today we hold these signs up in commemoration of those that have gone on before us because we know that they would not stand for one second for a world that was polluted with seeds that are designed to terminate and kill us. <laughs> Because I think that cooperatives 
are the only chance that we have to be able to own economies in our communities. Whatever you want to call them, call them yours because you're an owner of that co-op and you need to make it do whatever it's supposed to do. Don't finger point at them, finger point at yourself and get involved. Run for the board of Seward Co-op. Run for the board of the Wedge. Run for the board of every co-op that does not represent your interest and make it do what it's supposed to do. I read somewhere that power concedes nothing without a demand. So you can stand up here all day and say whatever you want to say, but if you don't demand it, it's not going to happen. So I'm going to make a real another question to you about are you willing, are you willing to make a demand to those that you, that you see are in power? Yeah. I, I don't think y'all believe, I don't, I don't know, I don't think, I don't know, I don't think you heard me. Are you willing to stand against powerful people and demand justice? I know my time is short, so I'm going to cut it loose. I just want to look at my notes and see what all I didn't say that I wrote down. I want you all to know that we, that I, you know, another thing that I read somewhere was that he that will not apply new remedies must expect new evils, for time is the greatest of innovators. And now is the time to apply new remedies. We must organize. We must march. And the new, and you know, it's not so new. We know that this is old school. This is old hat. But there are those that will tell you that these kinds of gatherings don't matter. They will tell you that you don't have a voice. They will tell you that money is more important. But I'm here to tell you that that's a lie. People have always been, been people have always been, those that are in it for profit. Always have, always will. So for those that want to prosper, they can prosper from our disillusionment and our despair. You have to have great courage and great commitment for this particular struggle. Not just the struggle for a healthy food system, but the struggle for a healthy planet. We cannot give up. We have to continue, and we have to understand that sometimes white supremacist structures create the spirit of unnecessary urgency. We don't need no GMOs. GMOs is not going to feed the planet. GMOs is going to kill the planet. You and I know the truth, and so we have to act like we know the truth. We have to start to do more than just try to buy our way out of this problem. We have to organize our way out of this problem. Your prayers won't save you. Buying organic food won't necessarily save you. What will save you is getting involved in the march against Monsanto and calling for the end of a food system that's based on exploitation of land and labor. Peace. All right, thank you, LaDonna. That was fantastic. Um, Tracy Sides of the Urban Oasis Food Center uh, is our next speaker. Um, Tracy's the winner of a $1 million St. Paul Foundation Forever St. Paul Challenge. I'm just thrilled that Tracy's here to be able to tell you all about this, pro this project she's working on. Welcome, Tracy. Hey, don't feel like you have to go anywhere. <laughs> I love that community LaDonna created up here. Woo! So hello, Minnesota. And I live just about a mile that way. So this is my backyard, too. I live up on the River Bluff, so welcome. Have, any, have some of you guys heard about the Forever St. Paul Challenge? Do you know what he was talking about? All right, so last year my 
idea for an urban oasis sustainable food center over in St. Paul, where I live, uh, won a million dollars towards implementation. And I think that means that maybe there were some of the voters out there who helped make that happen, so thank you. And we're just starting to take some steps towards creating a place where people can come and experience what it feels like to participate in a whole healthy food system from seed to table and back to soil. Yes. And I just want to share three things with you today from three of my heroes. Has anyone heard of Aldo Leopold out there? Yeah. So Aldo Leopold back in the 1940s and by the way, this is back when community gardens that were called victory gardens at that time, community gardens were producing 40% of the produce that we ate in this country. So this is a real food source. So this scientist, this conservation scientist wrote back then that we abuse land because we regard it as a commodity belonging to us. When we see land, as a community to which we belong, we may begin to treat it with love and respect. And for me, this is exactly where Monsanto and other corporations are dead wrong. Life is not a commodity that belongs to corporations. We are part of a community of life, and it is upon us to treat it with respect and respect the integrity of it so that we can sustain our own lives. The second thing, I've actually never talked in a rally like this before. <laughs> so so I, I take courage from the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who said that our lives begin to end the day that we become silent on the things that matter. And food, real food, matters to me. The people who grow and harvest my food matter to me. How that food is grown matters to me. And the rights of my community and citizens come before corporations. That is a principle that matters to me. One of the other things that really matters to me is about changing the conversation around healthy food. I don't think the right question is, why is healthy food so expensive? I think the right and the revealing question is, why is crappy food so cheap? And number three is that I feel this outrage, and it's right here in my gut, and it, it's disgust as well. And I want to name that it actually is coming from a place of love, and it is a derivative of that, because I love life. Yes. <laughs> and that's, well, that's why I'm here. And this, this is a love that actually is fierce. It's not just like a little nicey-nice sort of love, but it's a fierce love that gives us courage to come out here and stand up to powerful systems. And so I just want to name that when my hero, poet Mary Oliver, asks the revealing question, what will you do with your one wild and precious life? Well, my answer today is that I'm going to be marching for life and I'm going to be marching against Monsanto. Thank you.